Hello and welcome to the Overly Animated Podcast, where we take animation seriously. We talk everything animation here, including She-Ra and the Princesses of Power, which we'll be getting into right now. I'm Dylan Heisen, and today I'm joined by Delaney Stovall. Hey, y'all. Michelle Ender. Hello. Sam Quattro. Hello. And April Collins. Hi there. We have a packed house to discuss the very big season three of She-Ra and the Princesses of Power, which dropped on Netflix on Friday a few days ago, and we'll be talking the entire season here, all six episodes of She-Ra and the Princess of Power season three. Um, make sure you go back and watch the whole season then check out this podcast. The episodes are The Price of Power, Huntara, Once Upon a Time in the Waste, Moment of Truth, Remember, and The Portal. Um, we'll also later on uh, be getting into these episodes down the road on each on their own or in groups of two. But right now we're talking about the entire season, giving our reactions, talking about the big topics from the season. Find us at OverlyAnimated.com. We have a she specific iTunes feed. Search for that on your favorite podcatcher. Um, and we are also on YouTube at YouTube.com slash OverlyAnimated. Um, no, before, uh, we don't need to talk about this more than just very briefly, but since we always talk about this, six episodes, this is basically production wise the back half of season two. Um, doesn't mean we're going to call it season two. Well, it's easier if we just call it what Netflix calls it season three. Um, but the reason the season is six episodes is because they, it's like a 13 episode season, like season one, and then they gave us part one and part two. So that's why six episodes and it's like a lot of big stuff happening. Um, so if that influences opinions, we can, uh, you know, treat it. As, it's also fine to treat it as a season though, because that's how it was presented to us. Okay. It's because DreamWorks is on crack. Yeah, they did I think this it's with more like too. Netflix. Uh, uh, Netflix, yeah, Netflix sometimes does this, but also like every Netflix DreamWorks show seems. I guess the not only this in Voltron. I don't know because they have others. But um, mm. okay, let's let's uh, let's let's get into this though. And uh, I want I want big initial. What were your reactions to the season? What are the biggest things on your mind about the season three of Sheer and Delaney? Uh, they just killed Angela. Like <laughs> she, she did. Like what? Um, also, like, so I ship Glimmer and Adora, which yes. makes my girlfriend so angry <laughs> because she ships Catra and Adora, and they took Catra and Adora, and they were like, into the abyss, oh, yeah. goodbye forever. And I remember seeing a tweet, and it was like, man, we thought she was going to be Zuko, and no, she's just straight up Azula. Like, they were like, nope. I'm seeing a lot of Zuko Azula talk. Yeah, with it's just great, great. Uh, so Catra just like Catra needs a therapist, and she needs yes. some medication, and well, somebody needs to give Catra a hug. And I volunteer Scorpia, and she's taking like, care of that. Yeah, jeez, like y'all. Ooh, Catra, you need some help. Like a lot of help. Like, ooh, we need a therapist. Dr. Bo, I don't know. We need somebody because, yeah. like, it, it's pretty, it's pretty rough. Um, Adora is an alien, which we like knew already, but it's just really funny to me though because they're she's like, <gasps> "Who am I?" And I'm like, "You're all on this planet, and Catra's a cat. Like, does it really? Matter? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Like, does it matter? Does it?" Um. Huntara's bay and Adora is um super gay, like the gayest. Yes. Um, oh, oh, did you have what did you like it overall this season? I did. I did. Um it was very fast paced, but I don't think there were any moments that were lacking cuz the thing is like in most shows, which again, we're very this show is very much in the spirit of Avatar and one of the biggest examples of this would be I'm trying to remember the names of the episodes. So we have Huntara, which, you know, we're following our heroes and it's, um, there, it's very fat. You have a lot going on in this episode. You meet Huntara and you think you're going where you're going, but you don't. And then like we get all of these things and you, uh, you know, Huntara betrays her two person gang and, um, I don't think, do they get there? Do they get, yeah, they get to Mara's ship, and we also have uh, Hordak's backstory, but none of these episodes are too crowded. But what I wanted to get at was, so you have the heroes, they're, you know, this is a big, this is about to be a big story reveal. This is, a, they're about to drop a lot of information on, information on us, 
and you're really excited and then they and then it's the next episode and they switch perspectives and sometimes this is really irritating um in a lot of shows where they can't balance things too well or they're telling a story that isn't as interesting but once upon a time in the waste you have uh catcher and scorpia and that their story is just as compelling and fun as what adora and all of them are doing so this is something that a lot of shows struggle to do with. Voltron struggled with this all the time. Like, I mean, all the time. You were like, I don't care what you stupid, what are you doing? And here, and I've seen there's a lot of articles going around about this, about how in She-Ra, you, people love the villains just as much as they love the heroes. And one, it's because they're not even villains, basically. They're all just a bunch of idiots. But... <laughs> Um, so that's what's really, and even, and especially this season, they, we have humanized Hordak to an, um, like, I, you know, in the beginning you think, I mean, granted Brett, we're in season three now, but, you know, he's just your kind of run of the mill Ozai kind of villain. Like he's very, he has one mission and he doesn't even really care about Adora. It's kind of funny, actually. Like, he's like, listen, I have a goal. I don't really care about them. Like, we're just going to. Do it. We're just going to do what I want to do. But then we have his friendship with Entrapta, which is the most adorable thing on the face of the earth. And it is so cute. And I'm really mad at Catra for ruining it. Like, I'm so mad. That's actually the most evil thing she's ever done. And I will never forget. <laughs> she's done. hurting the ship. Yeah. I don't mean, I'm like, okay, you wanted to ruin the planet because you're mad at Adora, whatever. But you ruined Entrapta. And it's not a ship. No. Mm, I will no. talk about that. We're going we're gonna to have to talk about it. But anyway, like this this season, I think is a great example of the strengths of Shira, which is its characters. And you know, we have the split narrative, we have the villains and the heroes, but it's just as compelling either way. And this season has done a lot, and I mean a lot. I mean, just in six episodes of character legwork, we get so much with Entrapta and Hordak, and we do we get a lot. I mean, we don't get as much character development with Adora. But we're doing a lot of exposition for Adora. And like this is, I mean, this is her figuring out who she is. And it's a lot of figuring out what she's supposed to do as She-Ra. And really, it's a lot of wrapping up things that we've been building. Like the whole, you know, the usual, when you're the chosen one, you have to let go of whatever, you know, an avatar was your earthly attachments. And you had to let go of Katara. And here we have, um, but Adora finally lets go of Katra. So we have a lot of, there's a lot of legwork going on in these six episodes and it's incredible. And I think it's done really well. And I mean, these episodes are jam packed. Like it's honestly hard in some places to like, so Dylan has an outline and I can see what, what episodes and what happened in them. But it's when you're watching, it's very difficult to parse out like, and remember things that happened, especially, you know, Huntara and once upon a time in the waste, like these episodes, everything bleeds in. Like these are very, there's a lot going on. Yeah. I, I like your um, comparisons to the end of Avatar season two. I like the, the letting go of Catra. I think that's on point. I also totally see Catra um, in, in the end of the season is Zuko in uh, Crossroads of Destiny. Um, but yeah, that, we can get into Zuko or Azula because unclear if uh, she's getting the redemption. We can talk about that. That would be the next part. season. Well, do we, uh, granted, we don't really know. I don't think the, outlook for the show like we we we, yeah, we do know there's there will be two more arcs of 13 coming so they're okay the show's stopping at 52 episodes we're half oh, it stopped. okay now. yeah okay which is interesting that we know that going in but yeah um yeah i don't know it seems like they're finishing up production and so so we might get we might get the next batch kind of quickly i expect in a few months but we'll see about that we haven't heard yet um okay yeah there's a lot of good thoughts there from delaney and a lot of things from the season sam um what are you what are your big reactions to season three uh, I mean, Huntara, really. <laughs> I love her. She's so great. She's Gina Davis. I love that. Um, So my general reactions to season three is that, honestly, it's my favorite season. It's my favorite grouping of episodes thus far in she I kind of felt like, for the first time, a complete arc. Mm-hmm. Um, That felt like really... Not to say that, you know, the previous seasons weren't coherent. I mean, obviously, it's all together and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, it, it felt like, to me, like, it knew what it was doing. And it made sense that they would separate these six episodes apart from the other seven. Because, you know, it is an arc. It is, like, what is happening. And I don't know. It felt like... 
I could connect to it more personally. Um, maybe not so much on the alien uh, world falling apart tip, but more on the, you know, the, it felt like there were more stakes that I, I, I cared about. As opposed to season one, when I was just kind of thrown into this world and be like, oh, yeah, we have the, uh, the horde. And we didn't really know too, too much about it. But, um, you know, especially, uh, what was the episode? Remember? Like, I thought that was just a beautiful episode and it did really well in sort of um, illustrating, you know, character relationships and sort of playing with the whole uh, fabric of reality, as it were. But yeah, I thought season three was just wonderful, and I cannot wait to see where we're, where we're going to go next with it. Nice. Yeah, Sam says season three, the best season. April, do you agree with that? Uh, yeah, kind of. Like, all of these episodes were very strong, in my opinion, um, especially, like, in comparison to... Like the first two seasons, um, I felt like, and maybe that's also because we have like, like we are entering in the season with like these characters who are sort of like thought out. And like Sam brought up a really good point that like you could like the season knew what it wanted to do and it accomplished that. And so I really felt that as well. Um and I don't know, like, maybe I just relate to, like, everyone who, everyone needs a therapist throughout the season. Yeah. So, like, maybe, <laughs> like, I feel like, like, I can relate to that a lot more, too. Not that I couldn't, like, relate to characters in the first and second season, but this one I, like, felt, like, a stronger connection to, like, almost every character. So it was kind of insane. Even, like, Hordak, I had, like, moments where I was just, like oh my goodness, like, okay, like, we're, we're on the same level, like, here we are. So, um, and, like, I just really, like, I, I don't know, like, I never felt bored watching the episodes, like, I got really upset every time one ended, because I wanted to continue on. And I think that's, like, like, that feels very successful for me, is that, like, at the end of an episode, I'm like, okay, like, here's the next one, versus, like, at the end of an episode, I'm like, how many more do I have to go? three okay like let's keep going kind of thing so um at no point did I feel like I was like forced to continue on um and I kind of felt that way in the second season for something so um so that's like a huge success in my opinion um <sighs> characters uh Huntra Huntara was a wonderful addition I really like her um I really, really enjoyed Scorpia, but I think I also just had a lot of, like, empathy for her. Um, and she, I think she deserves better. I need justice for her. She deserves someone Hashtag who's going to love her. justice for Scorpia, wow. Hashtag yes. justice for Scorpia. Yes, because she... For like, the Scorpia I, defense squad. Yes. Well, and, like, it says so much about her relationship with Catra too, like how much she's willing to go for this. And like, she's willing to defect for this person. And then Catra's just like, all right, well, you're crazy. Like I told you to leave. <sighs> and like that, like while their relationship infuriates me, like I'm also kind of invested in it too, because I know that's what Scorpio wants though. I think she would be better off with someone else. Um, that's just my opinion. Um, yeah, Catra and Adora, RIP. Uh, that's not going to happen because <laughs> Catra is so far gone. And again, like my heart goes out to her, but it's like super interesting too. And I loved like the nega version of her or whatever, where she's like, like sort of like cut or like, I don't know, cracked and dark Catra. Dark Catra, yes. Uh so I really enjoyed like I enjoyed that character design so much. I was just like, wow, I want to be that for Halloween or something. Oh yeah, that'll be a good That'd costume. be so cool. Yeah. Right? Good costume. <laughs> so Though I would never be able to capture, like, the darkness of her one arm. Because, like, every time I just looked at her arm, I was just like, all life and hope is just sucked into that arm and dead. <laughs> 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 just like Katra and Adora's relationship. So, but no, it was, a, it was a great season. Like, and I was, like, really, like... The, while I was watching it, I, I was like, I'm so excited to talk about this. I'm so excited to talk about this. So, yeah, nice. I'm, I'm pumped to be here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's great. We, we like that. Okay, <laughs> uh, Michelle, and how about you? What do you think of season three? 
I think this is definitely the best season so far. I think I, I have increasingly enjoyed the show as it has progressed. I really liked season one, but I felt season two was more fun and more interesting and more dramatic. And I think this is even more dramatic than that, um, which is delightful. I think personally, one thing that I'm really happy about to see happen is like all, all the things that I really hoped for with this season have basically come true. Like we found out Light Hope hasn't really been an objective person. We found out that Mara wasn't as shady as we were led to believe. And she actually did the right thing. We found out that, you know, she like, Adora is she is going to make her own decisions too. And Light Hope might not like that. And like Catcher and Adora's relationship is being pushed like farther and farther away from ever potentially being anything. And I think like for a story, that's the most satisfying thing they could possibly do. I will also say, I do not think that there is no glimmer of hope that they could reconcile, but it is increasingly clear that like Catra is going to have to be the one to do like a lot of hurdles at this point, because she's the one who's kind of destroying everything all the time on that front. So it really is up to her. And I don't really know how her mind could possibly be changed <laughs> because she's just equated all these things just to like Adora at this point. And it's like, obviously not fair. And like, I will say when Adora, like as much as I love both of these characters, when Adora like punches her out, it's like, you made your choice. You have to live with it. I was like, dang, that's like so true though. That good job. I mean, I think that was definitely a turning point for Adora too, because I mm. think in a lot of ways, maybe she did feel very guilty and she did in part kind of believe what Catra was saying that it was all her fault. And if she hadn't left her behind, things would be different. But you really see her come to terms with the fact like, look, no, I'm responsible for my actions and that's it. I, I am not going to let you like put this on me anymore. And, like, if you want me to hate you, like, all right, you're doing a good job. I'm getting really close to hating you now. So I just, like, I love that. Just, like, narratively, it's so satisfying and so fraught. And I feel like there's there's so much, there's so many places we could go with this from here. So I'm just, like, really excited for the potential. I also think, like, Katja, honestly, was, like, such a standout character in these six episodes. Just, like, in terms of her relationships with everyone, like, her betraying Entrapta, her lying to Hordak, her giving up the potential to be pretty happy off the grid with Scorpio, which is the best life she could have asked for at this point, and 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 not being able to accept that when it was an option, and like Scorpio, like realizing that like this person she really cares about, just like has so many bad decisions and is willing to go so far. Like she almost threatened to like, you know, tase her out too by the end of this arc. And I just like, that's so much, but the crew did such a good job. Like I remember Delaney saying when she was giving her, her thoughts that like the crew has done like a lot of like character legwork. And I think that's so true. And it really shows just in terms of like everyone's relationships to each other being either fleshed out or like, flipped or just like pulled in these like upsetting but like really exciting directions and it was just so good I'm just so I'm just so happy that it was built up so well that at this point like everything that's happening makes sense even though it might be painful but it's like such good television at the same time I'm just so proud of them because it really makes this show stand out a lot so I'm just like very happy. Like, this, if this is like the third season, can you imagine what the fourth season is gonna be like? It's gonna be like a phenomenal. I'm, I'm so glad we have half of this show left to get through. It's gonna be so fun. Yeah, it's a good. It's a good point that the show's already really good, and we're only halfway through. Yeah, and uh, it sounds like Michelle's review painful but great of season Absolutely. three. <laughs> okay, <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll get it. Definitely get into the where we are in Catradora and their arc. We can debate that. Um, see if uh, we're, we'll see if we're going to a redemption arc or not. Um, that that'll, that'll that'll probably be one of our higher priority topics here. Um, I w- I think I was mostly overwhelmed with these six episodes. That was my main reaction. I was like, this is this is a lot, but maybe too much. Um, I, I think I'm on board with it being the best season. Um, I guess I don't think it's like a lot better than the previous ones. I think it's the show's been pretty consistently very good. Not necessarily great though. So I'm a little bit waiting for the show to turn the corner, which I think some people think it has already. So that might be a little bit of a disconnect between me and some people. But um, I think these episodes were extremely fast. Uh, that's good and bad. Uh, 
because it's it's exciting and I agree with everyone that it was like really engaging to watch and it moved. But I also kind of a little bit craved the quieter character moments of some previous episodes. But I agree those set the, this this like ending pace up for like a halfway point of the show. So we had a lot of great setup before and this is the payoff. I a little bit missed the quieter stuff. Um, I uh, I think that it's weird that like I feel like we almost reset in the first episode of this this season i don't know there's a lot like there's a lot here there's a lot of expedition to exposition dumps and that's another thing i wasn't super crazy about even though they're done really well um and uh i almost feel like a lot of stuff was irrelevant that we set up previously and like this is the important stuff but that's also okay because this is the important stuff setting up the rest of the important stuff i think it might look better um looking back on the show and i'm not sure how i feel about the last two episodes i think that's going to in depend on your enjoyment a lot of the season the two big episodes it's a very interesting thing they do with the finale episodes where they this like um alternate reality very different from what happened in season one i like that it was different not sure i'm sold on exactly what they did but i really need to rewatch because i've only seen everything once and we will dissect it more in the episode specific discussions but um i'm interested to see what everyone see thinks about those last two episodes because that was uh very different from a lot of stuff these these types of shows normally do i have at the very least appreciate that um and um i have a lot of specific thoughts about um characters and where we're going and i'm very scared for where we're going with certain characters like glimmer <laughs> Yay! Um, but, yes she's yeah. gonna oh she's got a new mommy now That's I, oh no yeah yeah, Yay! yeah i've <laughs> that, that's my uh painful but good is like i'm really excited for this glimmer arc but i'm just as a huge glimmer stan i'm really dreading this but uh let's we'll get let's not the most important thing let's let's uh we can talk catcher dora first i feel like we're we're eager to talk about catcher and adora and uh biggest reactions end of the season catra um hits rock bottom basically i think is everyone's impression <laughs> there's rock is. bottom and there's wherever I, she is yes. like no it's, it's true like i thought she hit rock bottom at the end of the first season but like this is a whole other level <laughs> of rock she could still there's go like lower illusion. yeah <laughs> it, it, yeah i think um it, it's like oh catra's been you know, evil and, but she's still sympathetic, even though she's doing, this is like, uh, Katra is ignoring what everyone else is saying because she has emotional turmoil towards, um, Shadow Weaver and Adora and she is destroying the world because of it. Uh, as uh, she's, she's trying to open up this portal, even though everyone's screaming at her not to. And uh, also she goes back to the horde despite Scorpia being like, we can, we can run away together and live our life together. And uh, oh, should have. Uh, <laughs> Catra's not ready for that, clearly. Oh, so I, 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 I definitely identify. Right space. Yeah, just gotta go see a therapist. They'll get there together. We, we always joke that uh, the solution to a lot of angst in these types of shows is just seeing a therapist. I think Catra is the biggest example ever of uh, just needs yeah. to see a therapist. Just oh, a therapist. for sure. <laughs> well, the thing about like a lot of conflict in a lot of media is that if people would communicate yeah. and or actually like have some self reflection to go through their issues, most of the plot, if not all of the plot, would not happen. So, to be fair, I will say, Catra has legitimate gripes. Like, right, right. Catra's, ne- we, Catra's never been presented as evil, and we don't understand why she's right. Like, like, yeah. Like, yeah. Her perspective. Like, I will say, like, Shadow Weaver is the worst person ever. Like, I mean, like, <laughs> she's no, it's horrible. True. She's such a bad uh, person. Like, Adora, like, Adora hasn't done anything wrong, and Catra has every right to be upset with Adora. Now, that's a thing they're just going to have to figure out. Shadow Weaver, on the other hand, is, like, horrible. Like she's It's interesting because Shadow Weaver is present- potentially presented as somewhat sympathetic this season. I don't even think it's no, somewhat. No, no, she's presented she's, very sympathetically because... No, she, she, is, she is on the good no, side. She is no, advancing no, the good side. Well, the thing side. is, you believe that, though. She's a means to an end, but, yes. like, yes. clearly yes. she's not a long-term No, the thing is, friend. the thing is, like... I, I see Shadow Weaver, and we're watching the episode, and me and my girlfriend are like, no, honey, don't do it! What are you doing? Like, when Glimmer's like, yeah, we're both like, no! Like, we're like, this is not good! But, like, it just, like, as even though I'm like, no, honey, what is you doing? I'm also like, I believe you, Shadow Weaver, this is horrible! Like, why? Why are you like this? So it's really, and they've done an incredible job, I think. Of she's one, she's we somewhat have, convincing, yeah, yeah. Well, she's very yeah. convincing. And then on top of that, even we've seen her be like evil, like she is like the worst. But then we've also had this 
you know, it's what we did with Hordak this season. We've seen the flashback when she was training Micah. And there is, like, Shadow Weaver, I do believe, legitimately cares for Adora and Catra. In her little messed up way. Like, in her twisted way. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, but she does. Like, she definitely, like, cares for them. And it's just so interesting. And I'm glad that, like, Shadow Weaver isn't gone because we're doing, like, some incredible things with her. Though she is definitely just using Glimmer as a battery, and I'm like, no. Yeah, we'll, no. T- we'll talk. We'll talk more about Shadow Weaver. I do want to say that, like, Shadow Weaver's story has, like, I wasn't really sure what the purpose of purpose of like. I understood the purpose of the backstory was to make her more sympathetic because what was going on with her and Catra and was to make us doubt and you know try and figure out what was going on, and then we are coming full circle, and this is so good. So many things are coming together, and they've all come together like in the like in these six episodes, and I think they've done a really good job of it. Yeah, I think yeah, this this definitely relates to the Shadow Weaver backstory and the moment of her Catra thinking she and she, her leaving Catra and from the previous season, and that all that all pays off, I think, really well here. Um, yeah, we'll we'll get back to Shadow Weaver Catra though. Um, the Shadow Weaver I and Shadow Weaver is a big part of Catra because she the thing that kind of kind of sets Catra off at the end is like Shadow Weaver's with you, like uh, she went to you instead of me, so that's like uh, I think that I think that's kind of the Azula in the fight with Katara like breaking point. Right, so here's the question: Zuko or Azula? So uh, I I will present the Zuko side of this, where this is this is Zuko at, at crossroads of destiny. We get the glimmer of light with Zuko. He has the fever dream. He's come out on he comes out on the other side. He's uh, he's going to be go to the good guys. But then Azula comes and he betrays Iroh and uh, he hits rock bottom and that uh, he gets you know like he he fully betrays them right. But um, this is uh, so this is Catcher. We see her with Scorpion the waste. Even though it's weird that like her glimmer of hope is like still being a, like a bandit and a bad guy. But like for her that's like a good version of her and uh, she can just uh, be in this uh, chaotic society and have power there and not hurt people too much and uh the, the the like she can be with scorpia and be happy but no she leaves scorpia and um goes back to the horde even though she the horde was basically kicking her out um and uh, tries to destroy the world um and uh adora like basically abandons her so this is like the bottom of the redemption arc in my in my mind like this this is like the, the this is the end of season two of avatar if avatar this is like the halfway point which i think it could have should have been for avatar but so now we'll get like upward trajectory for Katra, and I think she'll still be redeemed. I think like this is in in service of her coming back to Adora, starting to make amends, and potentially them ending up together. Even though I'm not that nope. big of a Katra Adora shipper personally, I think that's the trajectory we're still on. Sam, nope. you, I feel like you're uh, you are I feel like you're a Katra Adora shipper, true or but you were more Scor- Scorptra as well. Um, I feel like you've liked both of them in the past. Where do you think? Wow, we're it's going Kat with Pia. Them? Cat, uh, <laughs> Jesus. don't like cat okay. pee uh but okay because I, I think it's funny but no, i'm not the official ship memer so what do i know no one uh, what was your question dylan <laughs> do you think uh, where are we are we on the catradora trajectory still are we ending up with them together and cat is catra going to be redeemed i don't know i'm leaning right now on maybe catra might die as a redemptive uh thing but mm. then again i don't know if this show specifically would do that i don't know if it's within its um realms of allowing a main character to just die like that uh but it, it does seem like to me that catra is going really far away from where she could be redeemed as far as you know catch Dora happening i don't know I mean, in my heart of hearts and mind of minds, I'm thinking nobody's going to end up together. It's just going to be really open-ended towards the end. And, you know, sort of your own interpretation. And whether that be because of, you know, the powers that be or, or, you know, narrative choice, it it is what it is. But I think I would be happy if, like, nobody ended up together. (laughs) Even though, you know, I do ship. Uh, Scorpia and Catra, and I do like Catradora, and I do like Glimmer and Adora. Y- you know, to me, it's like, you know, these kids, they're too busy, like, trying to save the world and, like, figure out their destiny and stuff. They don't have time to... Yeah, it's like Aang and Katara, like... Uh, yeah, they don't have time to, like, deal with all that. Like, you know what, as I get older, I'm getting... I understand Katara's point of view more. Because, <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, there's a war happening. You don't want to, like, you know... Cool that you want to, like, express your feelings 
uh, since, you know, you might die. But, you know, now is not the time for a relationship. You know, you just don't have time in your life for that. And, you know, maybe at the end there'll be, like, a little epilogue. Like, oh, yeah, Catcher and Adora, they got together or whatever. But for me, I honestly would prefer that nobody got together. (laughs) Okay, this, is that this, bad? Um, well, it's definitely not bad. That's a valid perspective. I, I think I disagree. I can say I, I was, this is like not an early podcast discussion topic, but since we're here, I, I'm, this like frustrates me with this show that no one is together romantically because really? I think this show uses friendship to mean relationship a lot, and I can't tell when it when it means friendship and when it means relationship. Like, you can't uh, tell. Like it's, it's well, when Dylan, whenever it's gay, that's when it's romantic. But, well, what about what about Hordak and Entrap, uh, Hordak well, and Entrap, they, Like, is that? I don't know. You can read They're that either way. Right? Like I mean, wait, okay, I I will just say the second episode. I could not believe the show would take such pains and care. <laughs> really did, yeah. To buy yeah. this ship any more than it already did, but like that's all the proof you need. When, when we get that close up of her, and then the sparks are flying off whatever she's making for Horodak, and she's she looks at him and says right. like it's tough for me. You don't have to be perfect. That like one more proof do you need? Honestly, this crew knows what they're doing, and it's amazing. Also, Beatrice just really got in my head, so I like okay, could not. not <laughs> we'll get we'll get there. We'll get there. But anyway, I don't know. I feel like this show is like missing um, a lot of kissing away from being like the best. Show. Like you know, like is well, Glimmer and Dora should be together right now, and and uh, and Dora should have been in the past with Catra. They should have been romantically together. I don't know. I I agree that we're like not going to pair anyone off, and that's just like really frustrating to me. But that's just not that, my take. You know, not everything has to be about kisses. I think yeah. you can it, value. I think it does. I think <laughs> no, it doesn't. You can value. Scorpia good... might be gayer than Pearl. <laughs> that's oh, that's oh. a good care. I like that oh, comparison. I think so. Forward, Scorpio yeah. is so gay, like so gay for Catra. It's intense. But she might might be. Is she getting over at the end? We'll get to that too. Um, yeah. But... I do think if Scorpio were to, to walk away from Catra at this point, I think that might be a really smart, healthy thing for her They're to do. Definitely it, healthy. Oh, yeah. she's going to do it. I don't know. I mean, I don't know though. I she's seen this whole side of her, and I think that side really scares and concerns her. And I think definitely. she's realizing that, like her her idea of what Catra is slash could be, isn't what Catra is turning out to be at all. And I feel like. If she's honest with that, she might have some distance and take some time. It might take something even worse to happen to get her to that point, but I feel like that's definitely on the table. Yeah, well, well yeah, we'll get back to Scorpia too. Uh, Michelle, I feel like you said you uh, thought we were uh, still on the category trajectory in your initial thoughts. You, is, that, is that the case? I mean, this show is just so fundamentally interested in their relationship. Yes. They're they're going to be they're going to continue to be connected in some way, shape, or form. The idea of a happy romance is like too far out there, honestly, to even like think about right now. But I do think for there to be any kind of reconciliation, it has to be something that Catcher does the work for. Because like I was thinking, so if, if we're considering this to be the back half of season two, I think narratively that makes a lot of sense because like the the whole like promise episode of the first season was basically pushing Catra to the point where she she blamed Adora for everything and like got her to a place where she really hated her on top of other emotions like hatred is there um the end of this season did the opposite it pushed Adora to a place where she's like how dare you try to blame me for anything this is all on you and I hate you right back so they're both pretty much enemies at this point but that doesn't mean all those other complicated feelings go away but it does mean hatred is pushed more to the forefront of their relationship and their interactions so for any of that to change like i really think it has to be on catra like adora's given her so many opportunities even though like that's complicated too um to try to you know reconcile and and tell her why something's a bad idea and like clearly like Catcher's doing everything because, like, she's equating all these, like, legitimate problems that are happening to her with just, like, hating Adora. And that's what's not reasonable. Like, if, if she could look at Shadow Weaver and that treatment as more objectively the way Adora can, I think that would be, like, a pretty big turning point for her. If she could disassociate 
like her place in the minds of people like Hordak and the Horde from her self-worth and capability of being a good leader elsewhere, like in the Crimson Ways, like that would be really good. But there are so many understandable reasons why she hasn't gotten there. And like, honestly, I feel like maybe she has to hit an even lower low than this to really like wake her up to that. I mean, with the whole avatar comparisons we're making, like the whole, yeah, sometimes at our lowest point, we're open to the greatest change. Like, I think we're not there yet with Katra, but we're like, sure, getting close. And like, it's going to get worse before it gets better. But I do think it could get better. But I don't see at this point how we're going to get there without more things happening on Katra's side, basically. But it's not that. But yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, you could it could be like it could be fully alive and still be like where we are now. I feel like that would be my argument. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I definitely agree that it's on Catra now. I I think it's, this is her lowest point, but now the next step is her realizing the uh, bad effects of what she's doing. Like now is now is Scorpio leaves Catra next season. Hordak turns on her again after he realizes what she did to Entrapped. Uh, um, she lied about that, and she like has no one, and she starts to understand what you know what's, and she starts to see the light. Like I feel like that's next season is um, Catra alone. Right, you could. This would be a great time for a Catra alone episode. Does she go to Beast Island and see her family? Does she have like a <laughs> reckoning with Shadow would Weaver? Why family be on Beast Island? Because it's beasts beast. and she's a cat. Yeah, oh that's like, we talked about that. Yeah, are you calling cats beasts? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Uh, there there a separate mo- feline island just for her family. That would be the Michelle's favorite island. Yes, um, it would. <laughs> <laughs> there, there were more. Ca- there were like more animal people in the Crimson Waste. It was like shocking. I feel like it's the lizard lady. Yeah, <laughs> and the goat um, lady. Yeah, uh, April. I feel like you initially also you said that you didn't see the, the, the Catra and Adora Ador coming back together. Is, that, is is how do you see this playing out? So I don't see it coming out romantically Mm -hmm. because I fully believe it's within the realm of the show for um, their relationship to come to some sort of, um, I guess, like a positive ending. But I don't know that it's going to be a romantic one specifically because and I agree um, that like anything that's going to happen at this point is going to have to come from Catra's side. Because, like, she's the one who continues to, I mean, she, I mean, Adora has done some wrong things and that, you know, to Katra. And I'm not going to, like, discredit those or anything like that. But, like, a lot of the blame that Katra puts on Adora comes from her, like, comes from herself, not from Adora. So it's going to take her having to get past that. And I think that, like... Like, this is a really low point for her, but I don't think this is rock bottom for her. I think this is the beginning of rock bottom. Because, like, you, she still kind of, like, has people on her side. Um, The biggest one, of course, being Scorpia. And um, you guys were talking about, like, once Scorpia leaves, like, that's, I think that might be the Mm eye-opening moment. And if it's, if, and if that's not conveyed, then, like, I, I couldn't tell you what we would be doing with Catra anymore. And I think I would be insanely frustrated with her character at that point. Because this is all very interesting. But, like, I think at a certain point, you you have to, I guess, go go into Endgame. And if Endgame's just going to be Catra just running around being crazy and mad at Adora for no reason... Like that's a very weak end game, and I don't think that I would be okay with that. So I'm re- I'm really just hopeful that whatever we do in the future is just going to be like, you know, Catra finally hitting that rock bottom, and then seeing that like, okay, like I have to come up out of this. And I feel like like if we had ever been close to that, it might have been like towards the end of the first season but we're not there right now and i don't know when we will get there so um but it's going to be interesting to watch nonetheless i just don't see them in the end having a romantic relationship and someone else was saying that like oh like her the end of her arc is going to be like her having to like perish and not you it would not surprise me for them to kill off the main character. I mean, I would probably be shocked, but like at the same time, like sometimes that's what you have to do in order to get to end the arc. You know, like if Catcher's arc is going to be, she's just going to be crazy and angry at Adora. Like you can't, it's hard to come back from that. And so, it, you know, at the end of her life, 
I'm sorry, Adora, dead kind of thing. So. <laughs> I'm sorry, Adora, dead. Just yeah, well, dead. Die. I, mean, die. I, wouldn't, I will say, I wouldn't want Catcher to be a martyr. I would not. If she is going to die, I don't think it'd be satisfying for her, that to be her redemption. Yeah. I think if Catcher were to die, it would be satisfying to me if, like, th- this became an example of, like, look, sometimes in life, you're still a bad deck, but you still have options. And if you keep choosing bad options, you die. And that's not good. So <laughs> my is, like, I wouldn't want her to be a martyr, but I'd like her to be a, like an example of like, sometimes things just don't work out and like, check yourself and try to do better. Or this could happen. Like kind of a cautionary tale, but like with, with more care and thought put into mm. it. But yeah. like, I feel like it would be so trite if she, she died trying to do one good thing at the very because like catcher's more than that like she's so much more interesting and complicated but i do think it would be a, a pretty fascinating thing if she, she died just like having made a lot of really bad choices and not necessarily even being happy with that but having it lead to really intense consequences the biggest of that would be death so i mean yeah. if she's gonna die yeah. that's how i'd want her to die <laughs> I mean, I don't want her to die. To be clear, I'd rather she live. But like, if she had to die, well, I think that makes the most sense. That, that 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 yeah that would be a very interesting way to that's like a very atypical way to do that is if like exactly. we just we never get redemption for Catra she just you know doesn't make it at the end of all her terrible things like that would be we don't do redemption what Sam's talking about is like this is a very typical way you do redemption stories is the person has to die in order to yeah. be fully redeemed I could I could see that with Catra like too. the I, Terminator it's, well that's it's, what they did well that's what they did with Angela basically. Yeah, it yeah. is weird that Jill became like way more interesting as soon as she sacrificed herself yeah. for everyone. Well, I mean, granted, we'll talk about that more, but I think that was unearned. But um, I, I don't think Angela was like redeeming herself from being bad, but it was like no. in terms of her I sending know, Micah off. But it was a redemption. Like it was her redemption as a yeah. like to her in, in her like, eyes. Was it though? Uh, well, we can talk about that. Uh, April April talked about this not being rock bottom for Catcher. I think it depends how you look at it. So I think that's a good point. Like in terms of like making destructive choices, this is rock bottom. You can't get worse than sacrificing the world for your emotional term. In terms of like her realizing what's the consequences, that's to come. Yeah, that like yeah. Uh, her realizing like Scorpio leaving. I think that's next season. That and that and that's the yeah, that that's going to be really interesting. Um, yeah, she, I mean, she, the, the, in, and April also said like uh, Catcher running around hating Adora. Like that's the summary of the first half of the show, right? So then we have to do. <laughs> different things now. Yeah, like this, this is this, this, so i do i am confident we'll do different things with catra delaney you were uh, very anti the prospect of catra door still becoming canon in the end yes. uh is that uh do, do you th- is that your prediction as well or just how you personally feel about that uh i mean it's both because one at this moment like if if catra is redeemed i don't think it'll be a full zuko redemption because as of right now it's very difficult unless we, I mean, we're going to have to do a lot of legwork with Katra if we were to get anywhere near Z- full Zuko redemption because Katra, Zuko was confused. Katra is not confused. <laughs> like, she at least knows, well, thinks that she knows what she wants. Like, I think the biggest tell of all, and this that was really what changed things for Adora was in Remember. Because Katra was like, yeah, we're going to rule the world together. And Adora's like, is that what you want? And Katra's like, yeah, that's what we want, right? No. <laughs> Adora's like, I don't want to rule the world. but I don't want to conquer everything. But that's what Katra wants. Hmm. Granted, Katra, has, just like Adora, was heavily brainwashed by the Horde. But Adora got out. And Katra had the exact same opportunity, and she didn't take it. No, I'm not saying that, like, that's it for Catra, but at the moment, I it's very difficult to imagine. I don't think Catra will ever end up being, quote-unquote, good. It's very difficult to imagine for her character at this moment, and we have seen nothing, and I mean nothing, to indicate that she would could be good. You know, we were talking about her, you know, her, um, you know, her idyllic, I mean, what we saw and remember was what she wanted. That was everything's perfect. That was her dream. And also, you know, when she's in the Crimson Waste, like she's ruling a bunch of gangs. That's like 
that was the closest to her being happy that she's ever been. Yeah. And that's fine for Catra. Like, Catra can do whatever she wants. I'm happy for her. But that's not what Adora wants. And it's definitely not something Adora would think would be okay. And so I think, I'm actually hoping this is what we're doing because this would be, this is an extraordinarily interesting dynamic. And I think it would be even more interesting than what they did with Zuko. You know, we have Zuko, I mean, Zuko's redemption arc in Avatar is incredible. Like, it is amazing. But this, I'm not anticipating a full redemption arc for Catra because I don't think Catra can be redeemed. And I don't mean that in that she's too far gone. I mean that, like, I don't think there's anything to redeem in Catra. Like, I don't think, I'm not, like, her and Adora are different. They are not the same. And I, like, Catra would be perfectly happy just to be Hordak's second in command. Yeah, but let's think about the reasons for why that is. I know, like, I know, but like, and granted, I do think, like, again, it's just hard. Like right now, there we can't imagine any alternative. And I would like to think, like, if we can do something, granted, because we didn't have Zuko. We had Zuko. You know, he worked in a tea shop, and Zuko had a bunch of life experiences to figure out what it is that he wants out of life. And it's not like Zuko wanted to be Fire Lord. But he was he's able he's able to like turn the Fire Nation around. Yeah, yeah. I think I it's, and we're talking so much about Zuko. I think because like I think for our age group, this is like the the formative redemption arc. Right. right. Like this is like yeah. our concept is like based around Zuko and then Avatar. Um, I I think it's a great point you made, Delaney, that this is different than Zuko in season two. Zuko in season two was a mini redemption arc that ultimately doesn't pan out because he didn't ultimately he didn't get there yet. Like he has a lot of redemptive stuff before the crossroads of destiny. He's a lot of great stuff with Iroh. He's great influences in his life. Um, Catra is like, she's like a very short period of that in the crimson waste with Scorpia, but right. it's mostly bad stuff. Like it like, is we different. Don't ha- like yeah. right now, like we Catra does. I believe that Catra doesn't know what she wants. She doesn't know this yet. So and like, it's, it's also a good point that Zuko Zuko didn't ultimately have um, the same like really self and I had selfish interests as Catra. I agree. Catra will always be a, ultimately a self interested person. I agree with that. Yeah, that doesn't fine. mean she can be not. Doesn't mean she can't be on the good side in the end, which is what I'd say. Right. Like, yeah. Like, she's like she can be like a good Slytherin. Like, like that, I do that is think, possible. I do think like the ultimate battle when we were fighting Horde Prime or whatever. I do think there's a chance or whatever <laughs> or whatever there's a chance that Catra could see, you know, what I would imagine is, you know, she just wants to be Hordak's best bud and then she finds out Hordak's not anything and really it's like she's nothing in comparison to this ginormous army that and Horde Prime and she's been trying to get the attention of Hordak who's not even like like at this at this point, Hordak's like barely like he's they don't even know he's alive. And so I think what would happen would be Katra. I think both of these things could happen or either or that she tries her best to ingratiate ingratiate herself to Horde Prime. Um he does something like I whatever, like you're literally a cat, I don't care about you. Or you know and or this you know this existential crisis that she has makes her realize that everything she's done has been for nothing and that that's a good point there's this whole thing on top of everything she realizes yeah and i think because like it's just that right now like one obviously things have changed like we are changing how this whole world works in this portal but right now capture like it's easy to you know, Adora has given her chance after chance, but it was never a choice for Catra. Catra has, ne- it's never seemed to Catra that she's ever had any other option. And, and okay, not- we need to talk about why though. So like, I feel like Catra's whole thing, like the reason it's so much harder for her to get out of this than Adora is because Adora always, even in the Horde, she was treated as someone special. She was, she always shined during like the trainings, like other people were amiable towards her. She, she felt she had enough self-confidence to, when a decision came down to it, she was able to walk away from the Horde for something better. And she found a new, even better, you know, system of friends to help and support her and guide her to be like a great Shira. 
But Catra was always told that she was nothing and worthless and constantly felt lesser than Adora. Right. So well, that's like why I, she, that's why she wants Hordax. Exactly. Yes. And that is why like it's so much harder for her to accept another life because well, I this do is the think same well, this is the ultimate Catra's same thing that Zuko still, went through. Well, Katra, though, is at a point where I feel like she she might know, like, certain things are objectively wrong to do. But for her, like, I don't think she thinks she's a, like, she's worth anything yet. I think her deepest insecurity is still that she, she deep down is terrified that she isn't worth anything at all. And so she needs to keep buying into this system of, you know, okay, I'll be force captain. And then like, I'll prove that I am, I did a good job. Like she, she still can't walk away from that. And my concern is like, even if she finds out that Hordak is a peon in the grand scheme of things, he's just a clone of like the real guy that she just tried to oppress him because like, that's not that the still underlying problem would be the same. And that she doesn't, She's she's placing all this judgment of herself in the hands of other people. And that's never going to satisfy her. And if she keeps doing that, she's just going to keep tearing herself apart, basically. Well, so that's I what feel she like did. She, that's what yeah, the uh, that's what episode she, in the... Uh, that's what she keeps doing. The Crimson Waste was about. Like Exactly. So, I mean, that's that's still where she is. So it's like, well, how, how can her perception... Like, how can her perception of herself change for her arc to go in a different direction because that's literally where it's been going the entire time and it has not wavered even for a second. So I feel like that's like the real underlying thing for us to consider moving forward. How is her perception of herself going to change enough that she can change her direction? Because if it keeps going this way, looking for people's approval who don't care about her and will never give her what she wants because she she needs to give it to herself, frankly. If she can't do that... Well, I don't think she cares right happen? now. That's the problem. No, she doesn't care right now, but, like, that's that's the real question to consider, like, moving forward, for sure. Yeah, it's like, what will change for Katra? That's the question heading in the next season. I think you two are, like, um, doing a good job of espousing the two viewpoints with Katra. It's like, Delaney's like, she doesn't care about other people. She's bad. And Michelle's like, but here are the reasons why she doesn't care well, about we knew, other people. Well, yeah. like, we know serious. why. Like, I mean, the show has been very plain about why. Yeah. I, 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 I really feel Delaney a lot. I'm very frustrated with Katra as a person, like, not my type of character. Well, I, I will say, like, I don't have a like, problem with her as a character. Yeah. It's just that it's difficult at this, this moment. This is the time to be fat, frustrated with Catcher. Like everyone yeah. is frustrated but, like, with Catcher. Right like, but my yeah. thing is, like, I'm just not very confident in this whole redemption arc. And but I'm very excited about, like, I mean, this. She literally was like, "I'm going to burn the world because I'm mad at Adora." Yes, um, I, I, I guess <laughs> she I, did. I guess, I think maybe I'm somehow the most bullish on Catrador still happening romantically. I think like, uh, I think like over 50% chance or whatever. I, the, the only thing is the show is very dark in terms of like its narrative interests and, um, it like loves like drama and b- bad things happening. So like it totally could like sh- Catra could die to redeem or she could just never m- turn the corner. I think those are two things the show could also do. But yeah, I, it's the, the, the point being of like the show's all ultimately interested in Catra and Adore. Like this season has another tentpole episode. Um, promise being like the tentpole episode of the first season here we get remember which is again centered on Catra and Adore like this is the heart of the show still and I think I, it would be a tentative a tentative piece is what we're heading towards like them just being friends again I think would be like full circle well that would be a yeah that would be a, that could be an ending in and of itself you're right um, I think that's where we're going like at this point because it's I, one and granted well we have to revisit as things go on but I mean right now we're talking like two opposite ends <laughs> Yeah, maybe it's just my bias towards like liking romance, but if if this whole thing is in service of them being friends again, I would not be remotely as interested as them kissing like at the end. Like that's like uh, a lot more. I, I mean, I'm I guess I'm pro so pro kissing here, but like can we do like I don't know. I'm also just like the show continues to like have gay but not gay enough for what I want. Like like you know like the, the, we like if we're doing well, all this angst with Catra and Adore, at the very least they can make out at the end of the show. I mean, Dylan, like, here here's the thing for me. So we know, you know, Noelle Stevenson, we know the people behind the show. We know that their intentions are in the right place. So if they don't choose for them to kiss, that's fine with me. It doesn't like scream, oh my God, homophobia to me. It's like, this is just what they wanted to do. I'm I'm not not slamming anyone behind the show. I'm not saying that that's what you're thinking. I'm just saying for me personally, because I know like who the crew are and there's a lot of queer people. 
you know, it's fine with me if they don't do that because it's not going to be like, oh, they didn't do that because this, that, and the other. Well, even the yeah. one straight romance, Angela just kissed her husband on the cheek. And yeah. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know what y'all want. Really, the show is so disinterested in, in apparent romance. It's, it's really interesting. Like, I've never seen a show, like, so completely not interested in showing, like, explicit romance. And I think it, I wonder if it's a choice because they can't show gay romance that they're, like, uh, like they've been, like, censored. So they're just, right, like, making, like, that's why they're doing the romance as friendship thing. Like, I, I don't know if it's that or they're just not interested narratively in it. Well, I'm curious. Uh, I feel like well, there's, I mean, there are different ways of showing romance. I think the idea yeah. that romance equals a kiss is kind of really, <laughs> in, in really mo- close. In a lot of right. media, I that is, that is I how think it works, right. I think the show's been brimming with romance, but it's just, it's so much more concerned with, like, having conversations and going on fun shenanigans and spending time together and having that, like, fueled into everything else going on with those relationships and like to me that's a lot more believable and a lot more nuanced like i would take that any day over just like smooch equals we're in love like <laughs> is it prove it to me i don't buy that well they you know, they could also say i love you that's another thing like this is this is this is the same debate we've had over explicit like i talk about explicit representation and this, you could apply that to explicit romance too um yeah i mean it, it, regardless of, yeah i think sam's point being that like she knows the show this is the show's intent so that's enough i think that's totally valid you're right like this is a show where we know everyone's gay making this show the show's clearly gay like whether they're kissing on screen or not so i think that's totally valid i guess i'm viewing it more in the larger media sense like it would be a lot more impactful if uh there's there's a lot of kissing going to on be fair, also just, there's a difference just, between it being done right and then it being like an absolute disaster at the end yeah. <laughs> voltron uh. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah um, yeah, that's true. And, and, and when you do show explicit representation, it might not even be good. That's another, that's a great point. But I, I, I'm not even talking about representation, just like my, uh, the way, like the, the, the narrative. I don't know. I, I feel like it'd be more impactful if this was leading to bigger things. But also, I do think it's like fascinating the show's like subtle approach to relationships, like Michelle's talking about. And, uh, because typically, if you're not showing stuff early, it'll, it's building towards larger, like more explicit romance later, like kissing at the end of the show, like an avatar or something like that. That like a lot of shows do that. So like, I is the show is this show doing that or is it never going to do anything? Well, like I will that? say this show seems to. It's definitely modeled after Avatar and Korra. Like there are a lot of very clear parallels in show structure things. The show is much more compact than Avatar was. In Avatar, you had seasons of about twenty episodes, and even if even if we were to say that you know regardless of netflix like this show is not going to have as many episodes as avatar did it's close but not as many and you know see let's talk about this season like so much stuff happens in these episodes and there's a lot and i mean a, there are there are plenty of character moments that happen now they're not as you know in comparison to the previous seasons they're not as slow or drawn out but i mean there's still more to come and i would say we've I mean, you know, returning the corner, you know, to say about, I think, about romance. I would say this, I mean, probably Scorpia and Catra's talk in Once Upon a Time in the Way, that was, I mean, that was an entire episode of them just being gay, like the whole Mm -hmm. episode. And, you know, before that, I would say the most explicit would have been the prom episode. Yeah. And so, I mean, we're getting there. Right. You You could view it as building up. Yeah. And I do think, so I don't think we should dismiss it outright. Yeah, I don't I don't yeah. think it's like we can just say that the show definitely isn't doing that. But it also isn't clear that it is. I, I think yeah, right. it's hard to tell. I think we should also consider what what does explicit mean to you, Dylan? Because to me, it might mean something different. Like to me, right. explicit it, yeah, means like fair. you can you can look at something and reasonably assume a conclusion and have that be gay. I think she has given us that. I mean, as, certainly Scorpia asking her out on a date and blushing. It's pretty obvious what's well, going Dylan's, on there. Dylan's definition of explicit, which I agree with, is... Which, I'm, I mean, obviously Dylan can chime in whenever, but we've discussed <laughs> this. We've discussed this at length on other podcasts. And if a if you if you can see it through your hetero goggles, it's explicit. And that's what we need, because we're still not there in society and representation. She-Ra does not meet that benchmark. 
Yeah, it's it's. I think both both of these are fair. Like Michelle saying, like it, the, Shira is clearly gay. Like it, you don't need to read between the lines. Like this is clearly like, what kids, the show is doing. Kids are gonna tell that it's gay. I do think a lot of kids will see yeah. it. Yeah, but, uh, but also not every kid will see it. With is which is what Delaney's saying, which is that um, you explicit like there our societal definition of like I agree it's narrow. That's why I'm talking about kissing so much. I do agree it's narrow, but like kissing, declarations of love, you know, like things that no one can say is not clearly meant to be romantically and intended the show uses friendship a lot which um so, it somewhat diminishes that effect it's still very apparent like yeah Scor- scorpia um and catcher like holding hands in this episode and saying let's be together uh and uh, let's let's uh, be be stay to here together and be happy it's, it is very explicit there Sh- scorpion in the past has been super explicit i mean adora's uh crush on uh huntara i think is very explicit um earlier in the season like the show is doing a little bit more like that but it's it's not um it's not anything that gets to like the narrow societal benchmark of what we'd call like clearly romance which if you if if you want to say like that's doesn't matter so why do we care about that i think that's valid i think like i don't, from- I don't think it doesn't matter dylan but i do think like again like sam was saying like this this crew it's in there like clearly it's like a big thing that they want to do well and we're only halfway through so i feel like they're they're gonna do their best to make a good story that is compelling and interesting and weave these elements in where they make sense but they also are beholden to whatever dreamworks and netflix will let them do so i mean i'm sure like maybe they if if there was more they wanted to do that they can't it's not because they didn't try where they thought it made sense and like helped the story and helped their own goals so i feel like yeah it's like I, i i feel you like i get the like you, you want to be able to show something to somebody who's like, nah, they're just friends. Be like, oh, re- look at this though. Look at that. Like, you can't say that's not gay, and have it be undeniable. Like, I think that's super fair. But I also think, like, I don't know. There, the more of this we get, and we are getting more of this. I mean, Stephen obviously is the first thing that comes to mind, but still, like, look how far we've gotten from like the Korasami handhold like what five years ago four years ago i i think the more shows that that do this in their own way we should also let them kind of figure out what that means on their own terms because there are a lot of different ways to show this kind of love and these kind of relationships and they aren't all going to manifest in a certain way we might be expecting so i feel like it is all important it does all matter the representation like needs to progress for a reason. But I feel like the more we get, the more freedom these teams should also have to do what they want the way they want to. Not well, necessarily I'm not the way 100% want sure to. they're being censored. I don't know. I- I, 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 I agree with Delaney. Healthy. Like this, this could be this could be Noel's form of storytelling. No, there's definitely an Which element. Is fine. There's, Which there's, is cens- fine. there's censorship. Let's be there's censorship for every show that we cover. Like, yes. but it's like ultimately, would there be a lot more kissing on like, the show example, if there wasn't censorship? Uh, Unclear. Mysticons, I think. Mysticons uh, in the past sh- in the shows that we have covered, Mysticons is the only show other than Steven Universe that has been explicitly gay, and they were censored through it. It, it's it's still like uh, it's like I, I mean I get, yeah Voltron like, they, there's like very few shows that like have actually been explicit yeah um so like it, it, it is in every show um like even like Star the thing Star got through was uh, not yeah. even all super mm-hmm. explicit although they did as much as they could uh, the ultimate point a lot of people made I agree this show is different because you know it's gay every you know everyone's intending it to be <laughs> yeah. gay it's very different from the other things we still cover we cover like uh, another every other animated show like I think Steven Universe is the only thing that's comparable of like clearly this is like very gay and we know it's gay like uh, that's a big thing um yeah i think i think like i'm still unclear if like the show is um gonna be keep doing the friendship thing all the time or we're gonna lead to bigger romance stuff to come i could see either way i think either way could be really interesting friendship um, is know. still important by the way and yes, good definitely. love yes. is built on friendship which yeah, i will say so. this show is important in of itself just because there are like what two male characters yeah, yeah, and no, no Seahawk this Swift season. Wind. He doesn't count. No S- Swift and <laughs> Seahawk riot in the streets, people. Okay? I mean, oh I can leave Swift when I don't like him, but <laughs> Seahawk, I will. I'll give you that. Thank you. See, but we got Mike. My, my base Seahawk was missing. I'm pissed. Okay, but um, Michael, Michael's here. We had uh, tongue lasher. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. I'm not it's trying to stick up for lasher. It's lasher. Look, I, okay, wait. Okay, I wasn't. I wasn't trying to stick up for all male characters. Just she Seahawk specifically. Okay, like that's just like him. Um, the, I don't even remember what I was gonna say, but I. Uh, 
I catch it. I don't know with the oh, and the other thing uh, the, we had into a whole representation discussion here. I wasn't even intending with my critiques. I just like like more romance focused things. I think that's just my personal taste. Dylan just wants like, them to kiss. That's it, guys. So I just I wasn't even yeah. talking about like the societal benefit of representation. Like I think just my personal reaction to this is like I, I want more like explicit romance stuff. Like I like romance in shows. Like sh- I like shit. Well, see, you know, I'm like, fine only because they're children. And yes, children, I'm like, though, they're babies. Don't. I want them to hold hands and be cute. Like, yeah. then, then people are like, how old is Entrapped Us? So that's another discussion that's going We're on. N- they're now. not a thing, <laughs> guys. I'm not like talking about that. They're in their 20s. I feel P- people like. say Entrapped Us in their 20s, I guess. No. So. Uh, no. 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 I mean, I'm not okay, okay, having this yet, But, you know, they're yeah. friends. <laughs> Okay, we'll talk about that. So anyway, yeah, and it's like the one rela- relationship that's been arguably the most explicit has been trapped to Hordak after this season. Like, really? They're best uh, friends. <laughs> okay, let's get, okay, let's, let's, okay, we've spent like over an hour on Catra and Adora. Oh, okay, unsurprising. But like, okay, let's rapid fire through the other things that happened this season. We've mentioned all of them. But um, since we're on Hordak and Entrapta, no Beatrice was not banished from the podcast because uh, Hordak and Entrapta <laughs> happened. <laughs> On she, I would have she, kicked her. She's on vacation. She'll be back at some point to give her takes on what I could have I would have hung her up so fast. Be- Beatrice did manifest this, though, I think. So, well, like, uh, she did give a lot of good reasons and basically, like, indoctrinated me at oh this point. Oh, my God. This is why I, I did the not, like, s- scream about it. And it, that's all thanks to Beatrice. So <laughs> she did a good job. Nope. Who, who is who is pro Hordak X and Trapta? Delaney's not. I'm pro. Uh, I mean, the age wow. thing, like, I don't, that, we'll see about that. Maybe Hordak just ages old looking for, like, a club. Who me. knows? <laughs> but, like, I do love this whole, like, Entrapta being Entrapta. She just does whatever she freaking wants and does not listen to Hordak. And it, it, it's turning out to be kind of a great thing for him. And I think he's at a point where he realizes that. And he's probably never even had a friend before. And he looked so crushed when Catra lied about Entrapta. Like, I'm so mad like, at her. I will never forget. Oh, my God. It, she will never it's so good. Friend. And, like, Entrapta has a really good... I, this is... I, and this weirdly just ties into... Ca- like, even Hordak. He's, like, the leader. Even he has this, like, damage about, like, oh, man, like... I'm I'm I need to prove my worth that I'm not broken and stupid and not worth anything. Like this well runs deep. It's the same thing with Shadow Weaver. It's the same thing with Catra. Like all of them are kind of doing the same thing. And the great thing about Entrapta is she's saying, like, look, forget that. You are great. I think you're great. I, you know, I'm imperfect too, but imperfect things are wonderful. Like, I think, like, the interesting thing is, like, in a weird way, like, Hordak's getting a friendship he he desperately needs and a, a cool new body out of it. Thanks for that, best friend in Drafta. But Catra, like, I think one of her problems is also that, like, instead of building a support network the way, you know, Adora is, the way Drafta and Hordak are, she, she looks at friendship as, like, a weakness, like not like everything's so terrible for her. She can't imagine having a friend that won't betray her, and that's why she keeps pushing Scorpio away and doesn't trust in that one friendship that could really help reorient her her self worth. So it's just like it's weird how like much this keeps coming up, but like friendship and support seem to be such a big deal in the show in terms of like people realizing their full potential and being able to you know believe the good things about themselves and not get locked into this like fear of you know not being accepted or or being like you know wrong or broken like we've seen that so many times so i feel like that's the one thing catcher's also really missing but again like there are reasons why she's not there but i mean even hordak so like who knew but friendship is good there you go Friendship is magic, or whatever. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I agree. It's a it's a good uh, comparison to what Catra is lacking, like what Hordak is getting here. Um, and uh, it is, it I think it's really beautiful to see Entrapta like break through Hordak's 
exoskeleton and make him a new exoskeleton, right? Like this is I, it, it, the Huntara episode, them and that episode, and then the whole thing. I think this is like uh, them being the most successful with their friendship and relationship indistinguishable thing. Like I think this, I don't think this needs to be more explicit. Like you feel yeah. the heat, you feel the heat from it, even if they're not kissing. Like oh I think that there's no heat. Don't, what are you talking you, about? No, no, no. <laughs> at least agree when she is putting the new suit on him she's basically at second base like right I was, there I was feeling the sexual yeah, tension yeah. I was feeling it and it was kind of hot and I'm like this is like so the I'm best fan fiction because it's I real it's Stop a it. real <laughs> show they're science bros they are best friends science bros y'all are benefits weird for sure <laughs> lab, lab partners with benefits yeah. Yeah. no there are no benefits they're best friends <laughs> Hey April, are you pro? Are you pro <laughs> Hordak and Trapped at this point? I'm pro the friendship. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I don't know about the romantic part, but yeah. I do think that someone uh, or you guys were talking about uh, like how like Hordak has something that like Catra is like missing out on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that is for sure. But also props to Hordak for being like open and accepting of a friendship because like, uh-huh. and I think it's an interesting comparison to make too is, is between Catra and Hordak is that Hordak is like willingly becoming friends with like Entrapta. Whereas like Scorpio is like throwing herself at Catra and Catra's like, nah, fam, like this isn't happening. So I think and I thought that was great like just that he like and he cared enough and him being so hurt by like Catra's lie was like I was like oh poor thing like yeah <laughs> like I can't believe we like feel for Hordak but yeah, right? that's, that's where that's, we that's are a big now topic, it, was really, right? it was really hard to feel for Hordak because <laughs> he's supposed to be the villain and he's trying to do this terrible thing we're just opening a portal and like but like at to the same fair, time I don't think he would have opened the portal if he knew it was going to no! destroy the planet. Well, I mean, yeah, he, he didn't want to either. Yeah. 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 He, and he, he, he even sort of like. He was like, where's like, Entrapta? Yeah. yeah. Like he was like, where's Entrapta? And then like he also kind of like. I mean, I understand he like gave up in frustration. But also like wh- at, whenever he did that, I was like, oh, he may be just be done with this. Like he may be moving on to other things with his life. He's like, all right, let's re let's rebrand the horde. Let's. Go back to the drawing table. I don't know, but uh, what is it? Oh, I lost my train of thought. I just got really excited. <laughs> it happens. It happens. But yeah, go ahead. Okay, so yeah, I think I, th- I mean I think uh, Hordak being. Um being sympathetic here like there's a lot of backstory for Hordak this season um like I think if you compare it to Vulture and we do so much more ground here than we ever did with Zarkon right like this is uh th- this is this is a crazy contrast and uh we well that's because th- Hordak isn't Zarkon Hordak Prime is right yeah. so we'll see about Hordak Prime but yeah you learn this whole tragic backstory for Hordak and that he, he just wants to open the portal because he's 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 seen as he has to prove he himself to, to his yeah. daddy but like his his daddy. Daddy. <laughs> yeah, here's the thing though I, I think like his, his backstory is sad and relatable but like that's not what wins us over I think what really won me over is when he thanks Entrapta for he like acknowledges all of her work yeah and he it's, tells it's, it's her the entrapta is the yeah. emotional and, and he tells him, her yeah. like look like you're not like a mistake or improving like you you're great the way you are too like the he voice recipro- acting in that he, scene yeah is so good. he reciprocates the support and i feel like that's what makes him like way like a better person like he he's not just like selfishly taking it and giving nothing back like he he's supporting her too and that's like again such a surprise but just so much for his character to be like pro hordak so i just i love that that's in there also the weird baby him like entrapta like yeah and like kick his leg to make him like keep saying nice things and (laughs) that told me it makes like a monkey screech it's so funny I think we learned that the baby things were failed clone versions of him. Um, yes. So we get an explanation yes. for that. Uh, yeah. Um, y- y- so we learned that Hordak is a clone, which I think kind of absolves him from a lot. Honestly, I think it's a little similar to like people feeling for Catra. It's like, this is why she does the bad things. Hordak never had a chance to learn good things, right? Like he's just a clone of an evil person. And also, this- like, he is like the worst clone ever. Like, <laughs> can we talk about? He's, he's, just a, a, he's a defective clone. Well, and yeah. when Catra, like, 
calls him out. Yeah, when she rips him up in front of everybody, she's not wrong. Yeah. Like, he doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> Yeah, he's and, in the lab all day. All right, and uh, and his 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 friendship in quotes with Entrapped is his first chance to uh, have that a type of real human connection with someone. So um, yeah. it's a, Entrapped he, says thanks. I like being friends with you too. With yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, good. Like he's he's very good at reciprocating already, and it's his first try. Like good job, baby steps, Hordak. You'll get yeah, and like, and I'm wondering, he has waged a war on a planet for several years. I don't know how long. Like, uh, so he's had probably had like some chances to not be this bad, but to a certain extent, he's absolved in terms of circumstance oh a little bit more than Catra. Serious? A little bit well, more like, than Catra. Okay, I, he's not absolved from like all the murder though. Like, well, let's make. Well, that we have to think this is like Adora. Like Adora yeah. did all of this, and then she switched sides but like it, she had like been adora brainwashed yeah I, I don't think adora was ever on the front lines like i think their training was all like inside of the horde but i don't think they were deployed yet because they were still well i mean she gets deployed and she realizes everything they're doing is wrong but like that's the thing though like we're talking about indoctrination like adora got out and now hordak is like realizing that he might be getting out yeah we'll yeah. see yeah yeah I see. Like, I feel like what's going to happen is, which this is going to be hilarious, is we're going to have <laughs> comes the new everyone Hordak. against Hordak Prime, and it's going to be hysterical because Entrapped is like, oh yeah, so this is my best friend Hordak, and everyone's going to be like, what? <laughs> Yeah, well, the, well, yeah, interesting. Okay, and Trapped are being sent to Beast Island potentially at the end of the season now. So uh, I, I, I want to see how she plays into this. Um, I think Catra going to be going to Beast Island still. That's my prediction with them. I mean, the Horde also looked like maybe it fallen apart, though, as a result of the the portal being broken. So maybe there's not yeah, even what, a what even though. What even is the state of the world? Yeah, That's a good question. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Um, like, what's going on? Do people remember things? Like, what's up? Yeah, but we'll see, we'll see this. Uh, we we yeah, we get the backstory with the Horde Prime, and we'll we learn. I think it's like a great uh, stylized uh, backstory sequence. Oh yeah, I really liked episode. it. Yeah, I think that was I was really impressed with that. And so we learn all this stuff about Hordak and being a clone in the scope of the universe. And so, I mean, on, like first episode, we also learn it's or is an alien though. He's she was the first one. Um, like, can all first ones control the the sword? Right? Like, I think that's I an implication. They said that they could. Right. Or so the like, sword was uh, made to be wielded by a first one. That's what yeah. They said. Un- unclear if it's like specific first ones or all first ones. But yeah, that's I don't know. It's just a, th- these. That's what I said when it's like the, almost the rest of the episodes no matter. Like these episodes just completely change your perspective on the mythology of the show. Um, well, it's so one of those like, things. Like, I, mean, I think it's an interesting way that we're going. Is you know you watch Voltron, and you kind of know going in that. And that, you know, we're, this is an expansive universe. And I mean, the heroes, they don't take very long to get used to the idea that like, it's a universe. And then like, but we're dealing with Etheria and these people are like, you're crazy. Adora is not an alien. And so I think it's very interesting. We're going from this perspective, like very much like we would be like on earth, like, cause you know, we usually deal with these sci-fi stories like, oh yeah, there's aliens. It's cool. But it's like, no, it's not. This is a lot to deal with right now. It is. It is like a really interesting way of telling the story. Us coming from the Ethereum perspective, like there's no Earth perspective. Like it's just like, like so like, everything is kind of surprising to us because we have, yeah, like this is just a different like starting point um, from from everything else. Um, so like the, these uh, mythology reveals, it's like. Um, it, it kind of hits you a little differently. Um, it's. I think it's easier to accept um, that things are different than you imagine because we don't know anything to start with. But well, it's also like, but we're not like this is. I haven't at least watched a story like this. You know, you watch Star Wars and you're like, cool, Star Wars is like this. But we're, you know, this is a sci-fi story that we're familiar with, but we're doing it from the perspective of the universe is expanding before us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, um, yeah, like the, the, emp- the, it's comparing it to Voltron is interesting with the, the, the Empire or whatever was, uh, was the, yeah, and, and they, they, it's like they exist now and they're coming and we didn't even know about that. And yeah, Correct. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what this show does. I think they can basically, and that, do they had done now. it, you know, that they kind of did it backwards. Like they had to come back to Earth and be like, guys, but here we're like, we're on Etheria and it's like, we used to be part of a universe. Mara moved us. 
Right. That's that. Yeah. So they were, and then the Mara. Okay. That's and then and Mara moved us, and now they're in their own place. That's a good transition to Mara. That was a big uh, part of the season in terms of like referencing her. Um, she's uh, she, we have their message on the ship. Her ship. Um, she she uh, says that she moved Etheria to protect the universe from Etheria. I think was my read on that. Yeah, um, it's really confusing. That's what I got too. Yeah. yeah. It's not to protect Etheria from the universe, to protect the universe from Etheria, yeah. Uh, so that she, like, she like uh, closed them off from everyone. And um, we're and still going... And it's Despondos? Despondos is, yeah, they said Also, it we're then. not in a, like, we're not in a different part of the universe. We're in a different dimension. Uh, is there are no stars there, right? I feel right, like they there's no stars. That. Okay, yeah. It's... <laughs> I'm, I'm a little bit unclear on the specifics of what. But no, because uh, that was the thing that stuck out to me. It was like it's not like she didn't just move them; they're in a different dimension. That's why yes, they're like so yeah. intraceable. They're, 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 the they're, yeah, they're in a they're in a remote location, and uh, it, it. So I think we're we, in terms of Mara, we get we get like we take a step towards the inevitable. Like Mara was actually good, and Light Hope is bad that we know is coming all along, right? Yes, that this is. Yeah, we don't Light Hope sketch. We don't get yeah. the explicit also, Mara reveal, like, I guess. Also, they're Light Hope's weapon, and then we don't bring that up again. It's like, what the heck are you talking about? Yeah! The, something went on with Light Hope. I wonder if she tried to, like, kill Mara to stop her from moving the planet also, or something. that was really sad when Mara was like, I was supposed to be the last. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, right, yeah. You're right. The she line is, like, evil. Like, are the first ones evil? Like, is Light, Light Hope's definitely evil? Like, so we're going to get more reveals with that. At the re- in terms of the Mara, like, is good thing. At least Adora doesn't realize it yet. So that's the important thing, I think, we're, we're getting to that point. Um, but uh, Adora was, like, wanted to hear from Mara, at least, and was interested. And um, I don't know. So that that's there's more Mara stuff to come. We see her, like, actual form, like, and she's part of the crazy last two episodes, right? And she talks yeah. to, yeah. yeah. So that was really interesting too. Um, so we'll we'll be getting more Mara to come. Um, uh, what what other uh, big topics here? Um, we got uh, how about Angela in the last two episodes? Also, just also just the concept of like the the alternate universe and then the world falling apart and then they they close the portal. Um, uh, what, what what were what was everyone's reaction? There were we super into like what was happening? Um, was, it was definitely was the- I like this is very interesting. Like I wasn't anticipating. Yeah. Like what they were going to do. And I think it was done really well. And visually it was a stunning episode, like watching like the world break apart and like, you know, doing the whole like Adora is going insane. And you'd see like the cracks of lightning or whatever. Yeah. 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 Um, I was going to say this, yeah. this show has a really good job at like taking these really interesting concepts and just making them like look very interesting and like beautiful at the same time. Like with the whole like like a door going crazy kind of uh thing was like like they just did like they just did such a good job of it. Like having like f- like slowly remembering things, having the flashbacks, but then like with the world breaking apart around her um was just like it was it was stunning visually um th- and i i must say like that's truly horrifying to like come to a realization that you're like oh my gosh my like my husband is actually dead or right. like i'm not supposed to be here like this feels wrong um that kind of thing i thought it was inter- like an interesting way to sort of like bring scorpio like back into the story too cuz they're like oh well like we're going you're going back to the beginning and and I was like, what does that even mean? Like, and then like there is Adora, like in a briefing kind of situation. So um, and it was a good recap also. Yeah. Like that's the other thing too. Like it was kind of a good recap to kind of like get you like up to speed. Um, so you can remember like other key moments. Like I tried really hard to pay attention to what they did and didn't show us in the flashbacks specifically. Cause I was like, I feel like this might be important later. Like, that type of thing. Like, something is going to hinge on that. Because you don't just, like, show things willy-nilly. That would be sloppy. Um, You, like, everything... I just... I take everything as being very purposeful. Well, Uh, if you'd noticed, they were all very important character moments. Yes. So... So, yeah. So, I thought that was really great. Um, it, It was just, like... It's... Just because it's different, too. Like... I, I, yeah. I like different things like, um, you know, one of the things like we love whenever we talk about like Miraculous Ladybug, for instance, is whenever the episodes don't follow the usual format. 
Um, simply, you know, not just because we got like an entire season of the same format, but because like whenever they do do something different, it's always really interesting, unique, and we always really enjoy it, even if like the rest of the story is insane. So um, I just kind of wish that like... I- like, I like that we always save it for, like, the second to last episode of the season, but, like, it can also be, like, very frustrating because I'm like, you should do more strange things like this. Um, but if all you got is, like, one episode a season, okay, but, like, mix it up in terms of, like, where you decide to put that episode. Um, I get, like, the, you know, remember in the portal were, like, the season finale ones. Um, but, like, don't just save that stuff for, like, season finales. Like, you know, incorporate it elsewhere. That's interesting. Yeah, they could do more of that uh, elsewhere in, in the season structure. Um, but at the very least, it was a very non-traditional finale. Um, at the end of Remember, I absolutely love the Catra and Adora facing off stuff and getting the flashbacks and getting Nega Catra at the end of that episode. A corrupted Catra, which I think is visually really not great. Um, I, I'm definitely sold on like the second half of Remember being brilliant. Less sold on the first half was a little bit a recappy. I agree for me, but I definitely need to rewatch them. Um, like I, I think Remember is the, the going to be the big flashing episode people are talking about. So we, we're going to dissect that more to come in the episode podcast. Um, and then in the portal, there's also a bunch of stuff happening. We see young, young, young Glimmer and Bo. Um, we see Micah is alive there. And then at the end, he says like trying to call out to, um, to, to Angela, like, I'm still, and then he gets cut off. So a lot of people saying, Mike is actually alive in the real show, too. He never actually died. Uh-huh. Yeah, he, might, he might be somewhere. Yeah, no, it, se- it seems like that's a thing. I will say, like, you say young Glimmer. I think one interesting thing about the whole parallel universe thing is that, like, so Glimmer, if her dad wasn't gone, she she would be treated more like she's the same age but like they dress her in this like really roughly dress to make her look kind of like a baby and i feel like because micah was alive in the fake timeline her role as a princess is much more about like she, she's not like a leader like she has she, to be she, she's dad. a child so she she doesn't have the same kind of you know autonomy and she's not like a fighter and she doesn't go on missions she they tell like them to like oh put her in her room like protect the princess which is like so not the glimmer that we're used to. And I just think, I think like for an alternate timeline, that's like a really interesting thing they did. Like same with Bo making him a scholar instead his of a fighter. His are the glasses. Best thing ever. I know. Yeah. He was so cute in the glasses. Also, I'm going to have to say this. So my girlfriend will not shut up about how hot Micah is. She will not <laughs> shut up. I love that he's shorter than Angela. I love that. Yes. Too. It's really well, good. We might be getting more Micah. Cause yeah, uh, he's yeah, alive. It's- <laughs> like it's for sure micah is definitely on beast island right so like we here's... keep we keep we keep name dropping beast island that's where people get everyone's too. on beast yeah. island i think he's there here's the official name drop in the crimson waste or whatever it is like we name dropped that for a while and then we finally yeah. went there so we've been yeah, a, we'll it. definitely go there at least but yeah, yeah. it's already Sam? official yeah. sam prediction as to what's going on with mike and angela okay. so angela you know she's not dead either really that's true um yeah, that's true and trapped has said like the person who was left behind would possibly be trapped forever but she didn't say definitely so she's just kind of in between the portals right so that's where yeah. i think micah is and so Ooh, they're both there. Yeah, they're both yeah, I was there. Thinking so that too. Blah, 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 blah. They're going to reunite. And I guess, I don't know, Adora, Glimmer, et cetera, have to go up there for some reason. Uh, maybe like or a series just finale show up at like a very convenient time. Yeah. Like, like maybe like a series finale sort of a uh, deal and they'll be together. And then, you know, Glimmer will have her family back together. So that's what I think is going to happen. The end. Yeah, I, I think definitely in play Angela coming back as well. Micah will definitely hit on that to come. Um, but in terms of the effect on Glimmer, this is one of my main takeaways at the end of the season. So it's a little subtle, I guess, in the last few episodes, but because especially because we're moving so fast. But Shadow Weaver is um, using Glimmer's magic a lot to teleport them everywhere. It's not subtle that she's doing that, but it's, I guess, the effects and like it's downplayed by the rest of the big things that are happening. But then Glimmer loses her mom at the end. Her dad's still gone, even though they'll probably come back at some point. Like she'll be devastated. Shadow Weaver, this dark force is using her magic and influencing her. Um, so I think we're firmly going to be going down a dark glimmer um, trajectory yes. here. Yes, and I'm so excited. Also, this means Glimmer's queen. Yeah, so Glimmer's yes. queen, right? Um, I don't know. Glimmer's like I, I really love Glimmer. Like now that Star uh, is done, I think Glimmer. I don't know, maybe my favorite character on any of our shows. And uh, I just I don't I don't want to see bad Glimmer. Like 
She's too pure. Why? Like, why is it happy? Like, why do we need to see everyone suffer? Just the show. We're going to see super now. gay stuff, though. Adora and Glimmer are going to be really gay. Yes. If it's in service of Glimmadora, I'm fine. Oh my with God, that. Dylan. There you go. They got gotcha. it. No, I mean, like, this the is what I always ship. wanted from Star Butterfly, right? I was always talking about Star Dark Star arc. So this is, like, what's actually going to happen here with Glimmer. You're finally know? getting Dark Star. Are you ready? I know. Yeah. And with, so, like, I'm in on that, but I'm also just, like, really, out of all people, Glimmer, the best person. <laughs> like, the, the, show ha- the show is, like, very – that's another reason I have a little bit of trouble. Okay? It's, like, so dark. And, like, everyone has – there's so much drama and every – bad things always have to happen. And, like, it's great, like, dramatic storytelling. Some people are – Well, really but it's that. good because they don't do it poorly and it's not drama it's just very for that. Well yeah, it's very like, well done. It's just like you're just like, oh my god, again. It's definitely not a happy show if you just want like a very happy show yeah. with like, no. Uh, Which, the first season was probably the closest to like this show. I know, and it, drew, and it like it drew you in, and then things are just gonna get worse from and here. And now it's just like, nope, it's just gonna hurt. <laughs> Have fun. Yeah. The thing is, like, if we're doing the thing where Glimmer is ultimately, like, a villain, maybe even our last last season villain, if next season's getting her to that point, and then if we do the thing where we redeem Catra and Catra's on the good side at the end, then it's, like, Catra and Adora against Glimmer in the last season. Like, I could totally oh, see them doing that. I'm like, I don't, like, I don't want that. I don't know. I could not see yeah. that. I don't, I don't think they're going to turn her into, like, Dark Willow, certainly. I feel like... No, I do her- think we're going to get... It's going to be... It's going to be a slow, but I do think... Possibly, like the ending of next season will be, you know, that, she's being groomed her. like yeah. Shadow Weaver groomed Micah, but then you know she'll ultimately make the right choice. Well, so eventually Glimmer will be. I mean, she won't be. Granted, of course, bad at that Glimmer very made an impossible but... choice. Uh, with what? With you know choosing Shadow Weaver's help. Yeah, like, like they need they needed that. So yeah, needed to, exactly. uh, yeah, you know, none of them died. I mean, the last time we saw the flashback, <laughs> Did you like, die? no, because the thing, well, <laughs> but like, I think we were always led to believe that like the dark magic is evil and it always comes with consequences. But the teleportation spell had no negative impact on any of them using it this season. So it makes me wonder: is there well, a way where she can? See, yeah, if they're if the we dark start magic seeing, corrupted. Like, that would be that interesting would. because otherwise it's like, well, maybe there are some good evil spells that could actually well, help them for their cause. Well, and we know interesting. that dark magic corrupted Shadow Weaver, so yeah, we could we see it, we could see it begin to corrupt Glimmer. Yeah, dark. I, um, I, I, I like, I do, like. Obviously, we're not going to like ultimately make Glimmer evil at the very end of the show, but she could still be like this, uh, this villainous force. Um, or just and, get like, corrupted. Like, even if she's not evil, she could just get really sick from being corrupted, and they have she to. Could, yeah, she could get hurt. Yeah, yeah exactly. Be bad. Be bad. Have to wear her own to mask. To thesaurus dot com to see what the opposite of Glimmer would be. Like Ooh. the word Glimmer. Yes, because <laughs> okay. that's her. Uh, that's going to be her name now. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Well, dark, you need a name for a dark like, glimmer. Good name, light, light spinner, spinner, or something. Spinner. Yeah, yeah, light, so, yeah okay. it's light spinner. <laughs> um, I don't know if this is we've said, for glimmer. Well, is this part of was this part of the original show? But we could. Um, but anyway, the the point being, glimmer probably on a downward trajectory in terms of like good evil and and a catra on an upward trajectory i mean like i know she's at the lowest point but you can only go well this is kind of glimmer's this will be glimmer's journey to find out who she is like what she wants to be yeah i i I, god it's it's just like i don't know i just have a very visceral reaction to where we're going with this i'm like can we just not suffer like (laughs) no sorry no no we have to suffer and this is my version i guess of what people are going through with catra because i was never as emotionally attached to like but yeah I oh, as long as no one hurts my sweet baby Adora, I'm fine. <laughs> well, I mean, Catra's sure gonna try. <laughs> <laughs> she's doing uh, her best. Yeah, to accomplish she's doing that. her best. Yeah, so we a lot of in things we're projecting into this next season here. Interesting things, but um, yeah, okay. This is uh, also I don't know. my girlfriend changed my Netflix icon to freaking Catra without me knowing, and I turned on Netflix last night. I'm like, are you for real? <laughs> You're like, why not Glimmer? Well, I was like, I met, she was yelling at me because obviously I made it Adora. But oh, I gotta see like who they have available. Okay. Yeah, me too. Well, it was Pidge for the longest time. Mine's Pidge just is great. Robot. I yeah. love Pidge, but yeah. no. And then now they have Shira characters. And my girlfriend was like, Glimmer's I did that the Pidge forever. Of the show. Dude, they don't have Scorpio. Okay, I quit. Aww. What's the point? Oh, yeah. Okay, last, yeah, what's the last point thing of anything is, about Scorpio, honestly. Last thing, Scorpio, much less, like, I think 
part one, like uh, last season two was like Scorpio was the standout character. This season, a lot more subtle stuff from Scorpio, it's but still Scorpio. it's still strong. It's yeah. still strong. It's still though, very strong. She's less prominent, but we learned that she. It, I, I think I did, like we're like oh this big realization Scorpio will have that she wants to defect from the horde. No, it's like oh it's just a given at some point. It's like yeah. oh, gee, well, let's just yeah. run away. And like I think that's like was like really powerful. Like Scorpio just being like yeah of course like let's just go away together. And then at the end though she's she is very upset at Catra like. Um, Adora gives up on Catra at the end. Scorpio also may be done with Catra or soon to be done with Catra. Yeah, and considering yeah. for sure. Yeah, so that's going to be a big thing going into next season. Like, um, you know, the the person that's always there for Catra is Scorpia, and will she lose even her? Um, yeah, from, and then what will that do to Catra? That's what we got. What will, what will that do so to that, that's, Scorpia? Yeah. <laughs> Make her happy because then she doesn't have to but keep like, trying for a lost cause. How how great would it be if like like Kadra does something and she's like, I am done with this. And then she goes and she like re becomes like she co- joins the the princesses and like because she used that she used her little tail thing a whole lot. Okay, this Mermista and Scor- yeah. and Katra are gonna like fight. No, not <laughs> Katra, Scorpia. I'm just saying. Scorpio could funny. become part of the Princess Alliance. Yeah, she is a princess. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I think that um, would that'll... be great. I would love to see that. Because I think Scorpio would also fit in with the Princess Alliance pretty well, too. She like, is she's very she's really sweet. Yeah. yeah. I want to see Scorpio with a um, rebound boo. Um, <gasps> a crab gonna be... lady. Give her a crab lady. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it no, be, uh, it's going to be Perfuma. What are y'all talking about? Uh-oh. Why Perfuma? Yeah, why Perfuma? It's gonna, that's just what it's going to be. Perfuma <laughs> boats are going to riot. Oh my gosh, Mer- I would die Mermista, if she like attached herself to Adora. Like I would die. Or Adora. I, I, think, think I think she still doesn't like Adora. She doesn't much. like Adora. That's I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, they could. They've had some moments together. I, I Mermista, I think, is the catcher of their group. I feel like in terms of demeanor. Um, oh, you're right. You're yeah, right. She's yeah. a that's what Sam oh, says. she's yeah. Sim- yeah. she's more similar to like the little kid than the ice girl. Frosta? She'll be, oh, she'd be yeah, best friends with she, Frosta. Yeah, yeah. That, is that, like, Frosta. Can she just carry Frosta around? S- yeah. Sam, is that what's yeah. happening next season? Scorpio's part of the Princess Alliance? I mean, she's a princess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, no, no. Like, her family, like, joined the Horde because they had yeah, the yeah, thing. Yeah, no, she literally is a princess. Yeah, yeah so yeah. she's a princess. So she might as well. It's it's possible. That would yeah. be fun, too. Yeah, okay. There's so many fun things we could do. That's, like, a really exciting part of the end of the season. There's, like, so many great things we're looking forward to now. Um. Yeah. Okay. So there's there's a lot we didn't talk about too, and even with us going super long here. So um, Hantara, she was great. Yeah. Huntara, was yeah. Great. Uh, the scene of Huntara hitting on this yeah. girl and Adora mm-hmm. interrupting. That yeah. was good. And Adora's uh like uh, obsession with uh, and glimmer in the, uh, the some shots too with Huntara um was fantastic. Um, so they, yeah, we, we, we briefly talked about that too. So we'll, we'll get into all this more. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll do episode specific podcasts at some point. We have infinity train coming up this week, so we're going to push it back a, at least a week with, um, some of these, but we'll get to the, um, episode podcast in terms of one or two episodes. Um, so, uh, looking forward to breaking down the episodes in more depth, eventually get Beatrice's reaction to, <laughs> to, the, to the stuff, bring in some other people as well here. Um, so uh, yeah, give us your, your thoughts on everything we talked about here at, uh, on this episode at overlyanimated.com or in the YouTube comments at youtube.com slash overlyanimated. Any, any, uh, any pressing final thoughts from anyone? We don't need to go around. Glimmer jackets. Oh my God. Oh yeah, the jacket yeah. and the whip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Matching yeah. jackets. So yeah. That was great. The, anyone, that was pretty the whip? Gay. Yes. The whip. The whip. I, the whip. I, I, I really enjoyed that exchange between uh, Scorpia and Catra because she's you, like, you and I'm going to take your race, whip. Like, whip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to say whip when I use it. That's dumb. And then Tongue yeah. Lashor is Tongue like, Lashor whip. says whip. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was, uh, you know, I, I, I really like that uh, the Once Upon a Time in the Waste. I really like that. That episode, episode was great. Yeah. Really fun. Oh, when well, okay. When Catra was in there, like in their bar, who, bruh, she don't care. <laughs> she's lost everything. She's a loose yeah. cannon. Ooh, it's not even loose cannon. Like it's like I don't even know what murder cannon. Murder, murder cannon. Murder cannon. And then oh, it was really. I mean, it was terrible. But she's like, I'm gonna call you Kyle. Oh, I God. know. <laughs> I hope. He's When's the back. Kyle reveal coming? Something with him, right? We gotta do something with what? him. He was in the flashback. He- 
yeah. was there for a hot second. Kyle you saw his fashion wizard. bars. Okay, what we need to talk about is Noelle being the biggest troll on the planet. Yeah, in what way? In what way? <laughs> Have you... Like, her being like, we're having a viewing party. Look at these cookies. Like, I hate you. I hate you. Aww. Look at what the cookies look like. The cookie. Have, did you all see the tweet? The cookies oh. were, they were cats. And they were, like, blue. Dark and, cat and, and I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> they, they, yeah. And then okay. they even yes. had, I, I think they also, and they also had a uh, ration cake. Ration, yeah, I saw that too, ration cake. Yeah. Oh, my God. That looks fun. Um, it was great stuff. Yeah. Okay, so we got... Uh, a lot of yeah let us know everything about this we'll get more into more with episode discussions um talk about it with us on our discord very active for she read overly animated.com slash discord um support us via patreon at patreon.com slash who inserted the uh picture into that line <laughs> i just saw that that sounds like an april move good job april? never <laughs> no, I, have to it. I have to see the picture. Oh, it oh, was just graffitiing the outline while we're talking. Um, at uh, <laughs> patreon.com slash overly animated. Thanks to all our current patrons, especially our patron of podcast, Alex, aka Esteban Universidad. We'll get uh, potentially Alex's take on some stuff coming up. And thanks to our Sarah patron executive producers, Ryan, Steve, Alex, Beatrice, Hugh, Michael, and Needle. Oh, Alex is pro. Um, Pro Entrapta and uh, Hordax. There you go. There's not three of us now. I would say I'm I'm on that side. I think Jesus. relative to what? Yeah, hey, <laughs> no. they're, they're best show. friends. They're science they're, friends. They're really good supports to each other. They have some best friends. Cats are like they're best friends and more. You no, know, it's fine. there's no more. <laughs> no. And more. Okay. God. Okay, well, I have a feeling this will dominate some future podcasts. Oh my god! Draft a discussion. Yeah. So look I forward to I'm that. I hope not on those because I'm just going to be sweat blankets. Okay, it's like your mental health. <laughs> Five. No one is for. No one's forced to discuss Hordak and Trapta. You may bow, not. You may bow out of. <laughs> Wait, this is going to happen. Okay. Maybe we need to segment them off into their own podcast. With the, they've been talking about that too. The, oh yeah. Like, well, <laughs> okay. Just to, okay. Pr- first of all, comments on Hordak and Trapped, and then comments on everything else. So uh, let us know. That. So <laughs> thank you guys for listening. We will see you next time. Bye. 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 Bye.